Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Continuing my coverage of the RTX 3070, we're going to be comparing that card with last year's 70 variant, which was the 2070 Super. But before I do that, make sure you guys are subscribed because I have a lot more coverage of the RTX 3000 series coming up and you guys do not want to miss it. So let's just dive right in and see exactly how these two cards fare. Now the RTX 2070 Super was, in my opinion, the best price to performance card in the RTX 2000 lineup. It fared well across all resolutions while keeping its price point at $500 MSRP. As you guys know, I am a sucker for Founders Edition cards, and despite the bad temps on the RTX 2000 FE cards, they still looked pretty good and obviously the 3000 series is no different. They did a really great job this year on the FE cards and it's amazing to think that they added more performance in a card that's actually smaller than the previous generation. More changes include the video ports as now the 3070 removes that USB-C port and obviously the power connectors. The 2070 Super has a 8 pin and a 6 pin connector while the 3070 has the 12 pin connector with an 8 pin to 12 pin adapter. I'm still not a fan of the new 12 pin standard but at the very least, in this case, it's just one cable, so it's a neater alternative than the 3080. Now for testing, we're doing the same configuration like my previous testings. Both cards will be paired with the Ryzen 7 3700X, along with 32 gigs of RAM within the same gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard inside my Lian Li case. The resolution will still be 1440p ultrawide to keep it balanced with all my other tests. Now, let's get into the results. In Overwatch, the 2070 Super managed to get 141 frames per second and the 3080 managed to get 176 frames per second in the highest preset. That's a nice 25% bump on this game, so it's a nice showing going from a new generation. In Forza Horizon 4, I got 114 frames per second with the 2070 Super and 145 frames per second with the 3070. This is also a similar 27% increase in this game, which is great as you see that this generation is a good improvement over the last. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 2070 Super managed to pull out 64 frames per second and the 3070 managed to get 97 frames per second on a highest preset. This is a massive 51% increase on this game, which is incredible. Enabling RTX gave me 49 frames per second with the 2070 Super and 64 frames per second with the 3070. While this is only a 31% increase, ray tracing still pushes the boundaries of both cards and this is a nice improvement overall. Call of Duty Warzone gave me 87 frames per second with the 2070 Super and 112 frames per second on the 3070. A nice 28% bump between the cards. Now enabling RTX gave me 73 frames per second on the 2070 Super and 97 frames per second on the 3070. An almost similar 32% increase shows the consistent scaling of the 3070. Fortnite shows a similar result with the 2070 Super giving me 71 frames per second and the 3070 giving me 91 frames per second, which is a 28% increase. And finally, in Watch Dogs Legion, the 2070 Super managed to pull out 43 frames per second while the 3070 managed 52 frames per second, a 20% difference. Using RTX, I managed to get 36 frames per second from the 2070 and 44 frames per second from the 3070, an almost similar 22% difference. Now looking at these charts, you can see that the 3070 is at least 20% faster and up to 50% faster in these titles, with the average being just about 25%. Considering that both of these cards have an MSRP of $500, this is a really nice generational improvement. The 2070 Super still holds its own over a year after its release, and I expect this card to be a great bargain in the used market. The RTX 3070 is a beast of a card. A lot of you already know that, but it's really great to see the generational improvements that it gives you over last year's 2070 Super. I still think that the 2070 Super is a fantastic card, and you should hope to find this card in the used market for a great deal. I know at the time of filming that these new RTX 3000 cards are hard to find, but I know once they become more available in the coming months, the 2070 Super will become a very appealing option for gamers looking to save a few bucks in the used market. 
So there you guys have it. It has been a nice generational bump going from the 2070 Super over to the 3070. Now I'm retiring my 2070 Super and I'm going to be sticking with that 3070. I'm very curious to see exactly how much I can get in the used market. So I guess, you know, wish me the best of luck. But if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and we will see you all in the next one.